Live from the ABC7 Broadcast Center, this is ABC7 Breaking News. That's right, right now at 5, we're following multiple breaking stories tied to Ebola in America. News Chopper 7 out there flying over the National Institutes of Health campus in Bethesda right now. Uh, because that is where the, the first Dallas nurse confirmed to have the Ebola virus. Nina Pham is going to be arriving shortly for treatment. Now, ABC 7 has teams covering every angle of this story for you tonight, including reaction from the Frederick Airport. That's where Pham will be arriving tonight. All right, but let's begin with Rebecca Cooper, who is live outside that NIH, NIH campus right now with the latest on the preparations underway for Pham's arrival. Rebecca. Well, Leon, when Nina Pham arrives here at the Bethesda campus here at NIH, she's going to be treated inside Building 10, which you can see over my shoulder. It has a highly specialized biocontainment center inside the clinical center at NIH, and they have already treated one previous patient suspected of being possibly having Ebola. He did not, but they already went through this procedure once, and they say they are prepared. The specialized clinical center inside Building 10 at NIH has one of the few facilities in the nation specially trained to handle Ebola. But still, with thousands of employees working on the NIH campus every day, some admit they're nervous. It is a little nerve-wracking, but I believe that they are equipped here to deal with, you know, what needs to be done. Tasha Jackson serves food to patients inside Building 10. I'm a little nervous because I don't want to get sick. But most employees here today told us they have full confidence in the clinical center's ability to handle this deadly virus. NIH Director Anthony Fauci told members of Congress today Nina Pham will be well cared for, but said there are limits to NIH resources. We have a limited capacity of beds of being able to do this type of high-level care in containment. Our total right now is two beds. This NIH employee has experience with infectious disease, having worked at both the CDC and Emory. She says in her time here, she's been impressed by how closely NIH workers follow strict protocols, but says there are some key reminders for all employees to follow. Make sure you're reading entryway signs that say, you know, are you even supposed to be in that area? And if you're going in that area, what um, personal protective equipment you're supposed to have on. Just follow all the protocols you're supposed to and you should be fine. Now, as the director of the infectious disease part of NIH, Anthony Fauci says this biocontainment unit is one of only four in the entire U.S. The staff is highly trained and employees here say one thing they appreciated. They all got emails, no matter what part of this campus they work on, letting them know that Nina Pham is coming here and that NIH feels they are fully prepared to handle this case. Reporting live at the NIH Bethesda campus, Rebecca Cooper, ABC 7 News. Okay, Rebecca, now when Pham does arrive in the D.C. area, she will not travel through the three major airports. Her flight is expected in just a matter of hours at the Frederick Municipal Airport. That's almost 40 miles from the NIH campus. Roz Plater is live there tonight. So, Roz, what's going on at this hour there? Well, the State Department is coordinating all the logistics, so we have a few details about what's going to happen. We're told that she will arrive here sometime between 9 and 11 o'clock tonight on a, uh, a, a Phoenix Air Transport Plane, which is actually a charter flight. It will land somewhere here on the airport. They're not saying exactly where yet for security reasons, but uh, once she lands, there will be an NIH ambulance to transport her to NIH in Bethesda. That ambulance will get a police escort from here and onto the interstate as it makes its way to Bethesda. Now, this is the second time we're told they have done this kind of thing. Uh, back at the end of September, there was a doctor who was volunteering in Liberia and who was exposed to Ebola. He was flown in here again on a Phoenix Air uh, transport flight and then taken by ambulance to NIH and Bethesda. So they pretty much know the drill here. They're expecting it to go smoothly. They don't expect to have any uh, elements or any issues with contamination at all. And they have people standing by in security and we'll be waiting for her sometime between 9 and 11 o'clock tonight. For now, we're live at the Frederick Airport. I'm Ross Plater, ABC 7 News. Thank you, Ross. More breaking news on the Ebola front tonight, this time from Loudoun County, where an inmate from the adult detention center has been taken to a Nova Lansdowne hospital. We understand that this man has low grade fever, but what's really troubling is that the inmate had spent some time, some time had spent some time over the past three weeks in one of the West African nations where the Ebola outbreak is rampant. Allison. Meanwhile, Leon Dulles International is now joining four other U.S. airports in what's being called enhanced screening of passengers arriving 
coming from West Africa. A few dozen travelers arrive at Dulles every day from Sierra Leone, Guinea and Liberia. Those are the three countries, of course, ravaged by the virus with more than 4,000 people killed. The first U.S. Ebola patient, Thomas Duncan, traveled through Dulles on his way to Dallas last month. Now, the first passengers submitted to the extra scrutiny this morning called it a necessary precaution. That's the worst disease I've, I've ever heard of. And I think the whole world are now waking up to it. Well, it's a concern, a global concern, and I think precautions have to be taken uh, to ensure that it doesn't spread. So Chicago's O'Hare Airport, Newark's Liberty, and Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson are the other airports adding the screening today. JFK Airport in New York has been screening passengers since Saturday. Any patient who registered a fever will be placed in quarantine for further evaluation. As we track the developments on Ebola in our area, on Capitol Hill, there was a push for answers after the Centers for Disease Control admits that mistakes have been made. Greta Cruz live in our newsroom tonight with the latest on that part of the story. Greta? Leon, first of all, there is a very delicate balance here between panic and legitimate concern. An hours long house grilling today, lawmakers demanding specifics and black and white answers. The medical community saying that's just not always possible. On this issue, there is no time to wait. Lawmakers grilled health officials today demanding assurances that Ebola is under control in the U.S. while not inciting panic. People are scared. We need all hands on deck. We should not panic. We know how to stop Ebola outbreaks by isolating patients. The CDC director said he's confident that ramped up measures can prevent any outbreak. But he was put on the ropes by lawmakers, including one who cited overseas health care workers who claim the CDC did not take Ebola warnings seriously enough soon enough. Are you aware of that? I saw that quotation. We take all suggestions. To Have you identified who blew him off? in your agency? Um, I don't know that that occurred. Well, I would hope that you'd go and find out. And via teleconference, the Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital chief apologized for a series of missteps, some involving patient Thomas Duncan. We made mistakes. We did not correctly diagnose his symptoms as those of Ebola. And we are deeply sorry. All of this as concern grows. Several schools in Texas and in Ohio decided to close and be sanitized as a precaution, since some of the students were on the same plane as infected nurse Amber Vincent. And Frontier Airlines says six crew members from that flight have been placed on paid leave and will be monitored for 21 days, also in an abundance of caution. Now, the CDC also announced today it is now expanding its Ebola investigation to include passengers on board a Dallas to Cleveland flight last Friday. Infected nurse Amber Vincent flew that day to Cleveland. Now, her flight back to Dallas on Monday, of course, is already being looked at, but the CDC now says it cannot rule out that Vincent may have had the start of Ebola as early as last Friday. We'll keep you posted. Live in the newsroom, Greta Cruz, ABC 7 News. Thank you, Greta. ABC 7 will have continuing coverage of Ebola in America. We've got a crew in Loudoun County tonight gathering details on that sick inmate we told you about. And we'll also have the details on D.C.'s new response plan to the virus and which area businesses are being overwhelmed with requests from those worried about the disease's spread. We'll keep you posted.